And this morning, given honor and glory to Almighty God, who is the head of my life. This morning, we want to thank God for mercies. You know, I had a, um, you know, some encounter with some people on this topic of mothers. So I think that I have to work on it a little bit more so that man would understand what it means to be spiritual mother, the name that everybody loves to be called. And that name that, you know, it tends to sometimes to charm fears like, you know, we think it's, it, it is not, to, it's only Jesus that's, you know, name that's supposed to sham our fears, not us. When we come, when we use the word motherhood, it's exciting, but it comes with responsibility. And today, a mother always have an amabira. When we're speaking about church and we're talking about house of God, they need an amabira. Because the mother cannot do everything. She has to have someone there that have the church interests. And it's not and, and it's not easy, easy to choose an armor bearer. Because two cannot work together unless they agree. And the word agree is not a lot of people understand what it means to agree. The Bible said two cannot walk unless they agree. It means that we have to have the same determination, the same attitude, the same belief in what we are about. In leadership, you have to have a bearer, a pastor, all that comes underneath one. We have to be able, the leader, the minister, the pastor, the mother have to be submissive. You see this word? They have to be humble. In order to learn, we have to be humble. Many a times we do not want to use that. We do not want to be humble. God tell me and God tell me. And because God tell us, we tend to want to do what we want. Hello? You're wrong. When God speak to you as the mother, you have to wait. Wait on the instructions and make sure that you have the proper instruction. Make sure you understand the instructions. Many a times we do not understand the instructions, so we go ahead and we do whatever we think that God is saying, and then after we fall into difficulties. If we look when a woman is pregnant, she has to travel nine months, sometimes seven months before she has the baby. So it means when you become a mother underneath the authorization of the Holy Spirit of God, you have to under you have to know what degree as a mother you hold. As a mother, we have degrees because you can't just come a mother in the morning and in the evening you already know exactly how to feed the child, what to give the child, what to do. You need help. The Bible talk about the older women have to teach the younger. Many a times, the younger women do not want to listen. They want their own experience. So you as the mother have no choice. You have to back away and let them get the experience. And when they get the experience, some experience good, some experience are not good. But that is where you need. You need the help in order to groom the child, but you forget you as a mother have to be groomed too. You have to be groomed. And remember, the food that you are getting is to bill you. The Bible said that the, the, the gift is for the edification of the church. The church is not the building. The church is the members. And if you are the mother or the church, you are in charge. You are taking your, your direction from the Holy Spirit of God. That is only now. 
if you are guided by God and the gift didn't come from east, west, north, and south, but it come from the Holy Spirit. Many a times it is what in your mind. Most of the time people go to the ground, especially people who are very ambitious. They go to the fasting room, but they already go with what already on their mind. So the Lord can't put nothing because this is already there. Hence the reason why we said the first morning is the best because you don't know what to expect. When I went to moon the first time, I always remember what I was told this or happened. Nothing like God to tell me happened. Nothing. I'm looking for it all about I waited. Nothing. So I learned that we have to be wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen you. And if the Lord give you to be a mother, he give you tools. Sometimes they dress you in a certain way. And by your dress, we know, by your attitude, if you are truly appointed and a mother of those people who are bringing up, those who are initiated, the harmony that you have to come together, it's different to someone who, who just pick it up. I like the apron, so I wear it. I like the Chinese color with the, with the, with the Chinese neck, neck with the color because it looks nice. But they have meaning behind it. You see, now it's different. People are changing their ways. When we are going to pilgrimage, every pilgrimage is a different clothes. No, that should not be so. Unless you are sitting in a certain seat, they have levels, they have degrees. And unless you toll, because they have those who sit in the upper room. No, I too. When they give us a, 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 let's say a color or something to wear, we put everybody in it. That is not for everybody. Those that sit in the upper room, those that are going with the message, the others, the others that are coming, they are there as embarrassed, they're helping the some are, some are, some are, some are spectators. But we move in with the time and what we see, you know, what, what we see somebody do, we do. But it's a difference. You hear him saying, I want to go back. No, we don't. We cannot go back. We already passed. We have to fix what we're doing now. We cannot go back and change anything. Because we are followers. We're following this and we're following that. And you say, oh, no, I'm not a follower. You are. We don't ask questions why we are doing this. Brethren, when we are building the body of Christ, our hearts and minds have to be indicted in a good matter. The agreement that we are making with the mother of the church is to serve God, is to be obedient as children of the light and walk accordingly with respect. But when you're in the house, so you come and you meet others in there and they could pull you aside to pinch you as a, a, and tell you this, that, or, or you know, to, as they would say, to come to make you aware. You as the child in the house or the mother, you, you just know. In my house, when I see, when, I, when a stranger come in or someone come in to, to be a part of the church, I watch to see who is going to be their friend. I watch who they take in company with. Then I know what I am dealing with. So you, you have to be very conscious of mother. First to begin, you have to look in the mirror and you have to look who you are acquainted with. The people who are your friends, their behavior, their attitude. They said birds of a feather flock together. And there is no excuse. I went to work and my boss told me, oh, these are the people that are going out here. And I said to her, I cannot, I cannot go wrong with these people. And she asked me why. And I said, the language, the conversation is not one that I want for me. I am a minister of a church. 
I have, I have people underneath me that I have to give direction. I cannot be seen with these people because their behavior and their attitude is not one of, that I want to, she said nothing. And I choose now what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be with, where I want to be, what conversation that I want, because I knew that I needed to set an example. Many a time, a mother has to be a person, have to be frank, you have to be honest, you have to be true. If, well, if a mother has no truth and no honesty, the clothes become none of void. Because it's not doing the job. Some people have a cross in their waist. Do you understand what that means? That cross in the, in the mean, that still, that represents... The girdle. I never got a cross around my neck. My cross was, was, was into the belt and hung. Into the cross and hung. It have a meaning. I was girdled by my, my waist. The cross represent Christ. Sometimes when I go around and I see people with others to raise up my head and watch, then I start to watch the behavior and their attitude. Sometimes it's not that they don't get it to know. There was not, it was not explained to them. They don't know the meaning why it's there. There is a difference between the mother and the assistant mother who is the armor bearer. When you are I'm a bearer as a mother, your job is to focus on the mother, not on you. It is like um, Megan. Megan went, she married the king, and, this, and as they said, they wanted to hit the ground running. But whoever directed her did not tell her, it's not about you. You are dear to be an armor bearer. You are dear to serve the queen. That is your job. This is not about you. And this is what happened in the faith. When you have a, an assistant mother, assistant mother is there to assist the mother. Do as she say, carry out the rules, protect, govern. If someone brings something for the mother, they don't hand it to the mother and she hand, they hand it to the armor bearer. The armor bearer have to go in, open it, take it and make sure that it is, it, it, it is, um, what I want to use. it is the, hmm. it is respectable, lack of a better word, for the mother. It's not any and anything. It's like someone commented, you are the mother of the church, the overseer, you're in charge of these children that God put under your direction, as you said. And someone bring a vision. The person had to bring the vision to you and you have to say it if it's okay to deliver it to the church. We are not living in a time where somebody says, have a vision and okay, you give them the pulpit. Then, you see, then what happened there? It is that you who just give them the pulpit does not respect your office. Suppose it's something to destroy your house. Your job now is to go into chamber, take the message, understand, go through, and then know if it is something for your house. Because there is a lot of evil out here. This is why the Lord said, put on the armor. So that you will be able to represent the children of God. And you wouldn't be there sleeping. You must be physically and emotionally inclined. You must not be a greedy mother. You want it all for yourself. It's all about you. You're greedy. 
anytime a child raise up the head and you see the child is promising, you're ready to sit down on the head. They want to be better than you and they want, no. Great, Jesus said, greater works than this you will do. I expect my children to be greater. I expect them, I expect their work to be mightier. Because they're taking my teaching and then they're getting their own when you put it together. Your power is supposed to be strong. According to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But when we start to take I and I and I and I, you're heading for a fall. When we say Jesus, we must mean this is why the Bible says stop calling the Lord in vain. We're making vain repetition all and over and over and over. The, you, as a mother, you have to be able to put your children in subjection. When they cannot listen and they don't want to listen, that is the door. But they find their own canoe. So you could do what you want in there. Every mother gets direction for the house of God. Everyone. Who does bring forth children, man or woman? Man does plant seed. Anytime you see a man pregnant, let me know. We are giving out things here that is not real. We are accepting it because it's not real. The house of God is a mess because we are not real. I'm waiting for my spiritual father to come. Hello. I can't tell you. The spirit tell me to tell you. Better get out of here. God is not out of confusion. When we encourage these things, we destroy the house of God. The attitude must be one of Christ. The attitude must be one of love. The attitude must be one of success. Let us see, you know, what Roman 12 said about this armor bearer. 13, the 12th chapter. Hear what it says. Let me, let me get it for you. Because we need to understand the direction of what God wants us to be as a mother. You know, because I'm hearing these, you know, my mother, this and my mother. That and my, no. Mm -mm. We have to understand what it is God wants of us. Those of us that he put to lead his people. You as a mother have to tell the children they are subject to a higher power. Not only you, the power of God. Hear what the 12 verse said. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Romans 13, the 12 verse. The 13 verse said, let us walk earnestly as in the day and not rooted and drunken, drunkless. We have to be able to be sober you have to make conscious decision. We have to teach, thus said the Lord. A teacher must have an authority with the word of mother and a teacher must have authority with the word of God. A mother must be able to submit herself under the power of almighty God. Not under the power of he say, she say, them say. 
and mother must not have itching ears. You must be going back and forth. A mother must be able to tell the children, let us come and reason together. It have some children, no matter what you say, they have their own agenda. Then you realize when they have their own agenda, they are not there to build the body, they're there to build their self. So you as the mother know what to do with that. If you come in and you're not here to build the body, hello, don't come to the ark, you know. I keep saying to me, because I, this ark will put you out. A church cannot be in a church. If you are that, then you need to find your own house. A mother and a father, I heard Bishop Jonathan say, and I want to call his name because you know I just give people what is theirs. He stood in the Ark of the Covenant and he said this word. He said, you see here, this is where leadership take place. Our job is to follow, not to lead. And if they're leading us wrong and we are under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God is going to come and do his job. He's going to move them away. And the Lord will put someone in charge that will lead us right. Because the word of God said about leading the children astray. Yes, there are challenges. There are a lot of challenges in discussion in the house of God. But if it was not so, anybody would be a mother. Who do we go to? The question was asked to me. Then who do you go to when you're speaking to your mother and your mother is ignoring you? I said to God, You're not supposed to go to a member of the church. If you have a problem, then you go to the, to the pastor now. And you say, pastor, so, 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 so. But you make sure that your pastor is worthy. And that your pastor is not a cover. A, it's not someone of confusion. But the, but the pastor is there to demonstrate the law of God. Authority. A child asked me yesterday, what is the authority of the mother? <laughs> I said, do you have a, I, aren't you a mother in, in carnal life? And the child said, yes. I say, what is your authority to your child? She couldn't tell me. Well, I feed it and I this and I that. I said, what about what, what is the rest about the child behavior, what the child attitude, how the child grew up, the education, all of that. I didn't think so far. I said, oh. I said, well, you see the same attitude and authority that you have over that child that you bought is the same one that I have with God. Because I have to answer to God for you. And it's not what goes in the fire, you know, it's what comes out of you. I said to her, when I was disciplining my children, one of them said to me, you know, I think it's time you cut the neighbor's string. I said, I cut it. That same child came back to me and said, teach, if I knew what it meant, I would not have said it. But too late, too late shall be the cry. When you don't cut it, you can't sew it back on. You have now to go to God to fix that. You're on your own. A 
and the end result does not be right because of the duty of the mother. Those of us who is mothers, you don't know when it's time to get rid of them. They have to pull the breast out of them. They bite in. They don't want to let go. I remember some of my children telling me, oh my God, you're harsh. I'm not harsh. When time comes to push you out of the breast, I'm pushing you, I'm dragging you out. It's time to stand up on your own two feet. A mother must know she must have the determination to do the will of God and not yours. Your emotions must not come in, come in there. Remember, it's a job. Remember, what you sow is what you're going to reap. A mother must not put division in the house of God. A mother must not put strife among she members. Some mothers, they stretch out their hand. It's only money. If you could fold my hand and use the best the day, you can't fold it. It's not you. They're looking for something else, but we're forgetting our, our the mother authority is to feed the children so they can be healthy. That you will be able to do the job. Sometimes the, the, the job as um, the, the child you're teaching, sometimes that, that, that may not be the child, but you know what? The child knows the discipline. That child will be able to stand up and say, mm -mm, This is not what teacher Martha taught in my house. It says, service supposed to go on even though I'm not there. It's supposed to go on as though I'm there. So you know right when the direction for God now. Don't come to say spirit tell you. Because God has already given his authorization. I have children that God always telling them. Always telling them. And I just, just look. And I'm waiting because if God tell you I'm waiting because he had to come and say something to me. Because it's me that God give the key and give it to you. So how come you're going to come to operate and I don't know what is going on? It's like a fasting room. You see pointing, mother. But all kind of dick and Harry pointing in the morning room. Seal does come to rock seal. God get trained, you have to ask him for a house to put them in. Or if you're making children home spiritually, then you still have to remember that your mother is the head of the house, not you. That matriarch you're talking about is the head, is when she pass on, you could take spot. You still have to humble. Today, when a child make a child in the carnal life, that is my child, and it's still not and they even know to give the child suck. You have to help them to put the breast in the mouth. Respect. And if the child and respect you, remember the child children is not going to respect you. Your job as a mother is to demand respect. But if the child wants to cuss and carry on in front of you, what do you expect? If you want to do the same, if two of all you are winding up in the band together and dancing in the hall and drinking the same bottle together, what do you expect? It's not about clothes. Your head tie up bigger than mine with a big bow, or your apron bigger than mine, or your dress are more fancy, frilled than mine. No. All that represents something else. More frill you have is more you just play yourself. We have to be very careful. Clothes mean something. According to the clothes you wear, I just watch and wait. It's the duty of a mother to know when the trend line and when they're talking the truth. You might hear somebody say, how I going to know that? Hello? And just say, God give you the mother, just give you a sixth sense. Ten 
Sharon could be crying inside there and we all stand up. The I will know when it's my child cry because I know the song of the voice. The word of God said the sheep know the master voice. Ma the sheep know the master voice and the master know the trend. My name, he knows. The Lord know. He need no help from us to do his job. The word of God is talking to us day and day and night after night, brethren, about being children of God. And being obedient to the, to the law of God. Making conscious sacrifice as a mother. You have to sacrifice your time. But the time is worth something. In the church, they take your time for granted. Of course, when we come in the house, we are used there. People come to use you just for what they need. And when they get it, they're gone. We have to learn to accept that it's not about us. We are placed there to do a job. What happened? It just become personal and, and, and it's something that we all as mothers have a problem. Many times things become very personal to me. I'm not going to take myself out. When you feed and you give and you give and when you look around and they turn their back on you, it hurts. And to them it's alright because I'm going on and start my new life. You then have to come now and retrain somebody else. Sometimes the time you don't train them, it's time for you. You lie down on a bed, you can't even say nothing. They have to hand you a cup of water. You think that does sound nice? We all want to see the fruits of our labor. We want to be strong to see it. But we have to be careful in the tree we plant in. Make sure that you plant it deep enough that it will get root. Monday I said I plant something and I didn't put it deep now. Deep it down enough so when it when it spring up, you know, you know, um, brother Tony saying how oh, it thin so it had to take no ground because you didn't plant it in the right moon. It's a lot. Brethren, God created us and fashioned us, and we hear all kind of story. He said you have the moon to run by night. And the sun to rule by day. Mother, you understanding what I'm saying? So the moon and the star mean something. The sun mean by day because if you, when you're planted, they tell you that you have to get sunlight. If you keep the children underneath there all the time, it is not a cult. They have to breed. You can't go here, you can't. I don't want you to hear this and I don't want, hello? They have to hear. They have to able to differentiate the difference between wrong and right. They have to be able to go to another church, another denomination, sit down, take service, enjoy it and come back. If they don't understand, then they have to come to you and you have to help explain. That does not mean to say the church is wrong. We have St. Catherine, we have the Ark of the Covenant. Of course, we have to understand it's two different operations. One is saint, one is covenant. You have mount. You have to understand what it means. It can't be running the same way. This is why we have changing of the God. Some children are very rebellious. They never satisfy. Their principles are darkened by the thinking and by the, by the people they mix with. 
You just know when the children are ready to change. You're ready when they're ready to take a different direction. You just listen when you listen to the preaching or you listen to the conversation. It becomes different. Sometimes the mothers can't handle it because the mother too ain't grounded. They're going like on thinking horse to battle. We cannot bargain with God. It's either you are or you aren't. One said to me, I like to be independent. I said, then you need to find your own house. It's about us. We build in the body. Mothers, be very careful what kind of milk you're giving. Make sure it's full cream and not 1%. And you do not have to establish yourself as a mother. You don't need to go on Facebook and carry on and all this sort of thing. It's not a fashion show. There are certain conditions that you need to follow. You have to have goals. You have to have vision. And the vision has to be one with God. It cannot be one with the devil. Even though when we go in on a, on a prayer breakfast and we go in somewhere from the family quiet, they find this, hello? It's a fasting thing. We're going on pilgrimage. You're drinking. You're dissing. I, I, I have diabetes, so you know I have to eat. I have this, you know I have to that. I have, oh God, I'm so sick and tired of it. Jesus said, can't you watch with me for a while? Watch. The word of God said, hey, you know, it comes through fasting and praying. What does that mean to you? Fulfilling the duty of the Lord, the one that you are called to do. Oh, they give me that, you know, but me, I don't want your lie. You lie. I teach a mother saying you lie. Is God we talking about? We're not talking about a friend. That a friend could give you something and you put it. I have plenty of things people give me up in a barrel. It's not because I don't want it. I don't have uses for it yet. The body of Christ that are building it, it ain't it, it have a time for it yet. Not, no circumstances have not arised that I have to use it. We want to gain everything. We want everything. As a mother, you cannot have everything. Hence the reason why you send your child to school. That's another thing we ain't understanding. As a mother, you're not the teacher. You only could teach up to so much. Why you think it have a teacher in the church? No, this is my child. She can't tell me anything. It's God's child. It's not yours. 
And it came there for a teaching. It came there, you may, they send the child, the preacher preach, the preacher get the child, they bring it in, they come to the parents. I am not a baptist, a mother. I'm not a pointer. I'm an evangelist. The Lord sent me out there to do a job. You go out there, you bring them, you bring them home. The parents take care of them. When they reach a certain age, is a teacher now, the teacher has to teach. Because a, trans, a, a transition had to take from the mother to the teacher. You still have to come back and the mother have to see you grow. Because we're building the body. We all have to come together. We have to be fitly joined together according to the word. This operation is not about one person. The mother stands at the church and she has to see everything. Because most time the, the captain is seeing, the watchman is seeing, the diver. No. Because many a time they do understand. And they do not want to come and get teaching. Because they're too busy. Sometimes, mother, they come today, you see them tomorrow, they come to the next day, you see them, well, come on, tell me what you can do. So we keep having to go back to teach you while we are already running in front. No! You have to put yourself in place. Advance to be recognized. You have to put yourself in place to prosper. I don't have to come down to meet you. You have to rise up to meet me. It have times according to the situation you're in. If you have a loving mother, and she has sympathy because you was a, a respectful child, you didn't disrespect and run and carry on. You wasn't a busybody. So the mother now come and wrap you up now. According to the word, they get at that five, three, or seven, and they wrap you. And they keep you now, and they start to teach you. People talk, oh, a lot of them, they wrap them in this, and they don't understand what's going on. The Bible said, firm as a rock, the truth shall stand and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And this is what people do. This is what we're doing. As a mother, you have to know. If you may believe, how you expect the children to believe? As a mother, sometimes you have to stay in prayer and wait on God. You will hear, I show we hear it. Oh gosh, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. But you're praying with a mess. Your prayer is not unto God holy and solely. There is seven depths, and if there is seven depths, don't you think there is seven heights? The prayer to be strong enough to reach. If you do not have the power in the prayer, how it reaching where it's supposed to go? I talk about it in my house all the time. You can't even hear what they're saying. It's making no sense. There is no depth. Correction. My job is to correct you. Everybody who knows teacher mother, I am not a soft person, but I am a loving person. If you come nice or sweet. But you have to know if you're coming, you're coming to hear from me the truth. Whatever you give me, I will dissect it for you. I have children already that I lay hands and tell me straight up, I want to hear from God. When they hear from God, now you want me to come and help you hold the Lord. No. You was disrespectful to tell me that's the Holy Lord.
I don't want you to do all right, go ahead. When it comes to heavy, you want to drop it on mommy? Hell no. I was trying to help you so you won't feel that pain. But now you feel the pain, you want to let no. We both would have worked together hand in hand and you wouldn't have feel all the weight. But as you're being rude and you want to do it, here is it. The Bible said the older have to teach the younger. If the younger don't want to, the older can't force you to take it. David went to God. When David messed up, my mother do me the same thing that God tell David. Today, everybody, <laughs> when I tell you, sorry, <laughs> hey, I ain't take it. Hello, I took it. I bow beneath you and I took it. Today, she blessed me. I had to run back for she to bless me because she already did. You have to go through the fire and not get burned, mother. You have to be tested as good goal, mother. When I was going to mother nails there long and have all them set up thing on it and I have all them set up lipstick in the church. You know, sometimes when you're going to have me, I have to check myself when I come in here and try to scrape it out. Those who know me in my house, when I now come, you couldn't do that. When you come into church, your face couldn't have all this set of makeup as you think is a masquerader. Your nails couldn't be long and have all them set of stuff on it. You couldn't do it. But I find a talk, a talk, and man and taken, so I leave man to their own. When I went to moon with my father, he told me I have to go back to my first love, go back to what you know. So I had to change now because I was on the wrong course. Because I tried to give people what they want and not be the mother and teacher that God wants me to be. Man started to talk about my eye. You see how she watching? She eye. My eye. I didn't even know what was going on. But you seeing what you want to see. I remember a certain child that I lay hands and tell, tell talking to people. Tell me, Who does put their eyes so? That is disrespect and rude and disrespect. You're taking it to your children. And when you take it to your children, you expect your children to have respect for your pointer or your mother? No. This is what you teach. You teach them to be disrespectful. You open Pandora box and they walk in. And you expect when your turn come now for you to get respect. It does not work that way. What you dish out is what you're going to receive. What you plant is what you're going to re reap. When a child leave and go to another church, the other mother want to sit down there with them and bow talk the church you come from and they this and that, hello? Family, it is direction. I came off underneath some spiritual people. A woman by the name of Teacher Olga Glaud have never changed her grave. Long time, have never one day with me, teacher, my father, that baptized, baptized when I was 11 years old. Have never one day, have I seen anything to make me walk the wrong side of the road. Instead of that, should I color you and put you down. And if you retaliate, you're in trouble. Today, you can't even speak to the children. As a bigger man, and I told him, I won't keep when you discipline them. Sometimes, well, everybody is big people, and I said, big people, and you're big, find your own key. But in here, you cannot do that. You, do you really believe all these things should be have to say? No. It's the same thing I said to people when you have the children. As a mother, you have a child in the corner. Will you make your child the teacher when you send your child to school? It is not the job of the teacher to discipline your child. It is your job. When your child go to school, it's they go to learn. If the 
teacher have to spend time disciplining the child, what is going to happen in the, for the child to learn? They spend more time teaching it how to be a decent human being instead how to be able to get a job, how to educate themselves so that they're able to live in society. Then you're vexed with the teacher because you didn't discipline your child. Women of God, try to discover yourself. Try to correct your mistakes. Women and mothers of God, stop misrepresenting the house of God, the children of God. Under Understand your authority in the house of God. Remember, you have to dress the path. You have to walk the path. You have to live the path. Remember, it's not about you. Remember, there will be disappointment. There will be disappointments. As a mother, be careful who supports you. Careful with those that come in to, dis in to discourage you. There will be frustration among the house because the, when you remember the church is a rehab center, I want to repeat that the church is a rehab center. Remember the fasting room is a hospital. Remember you're going into the fasting room. You as the mother is because the joints are not fitly joined together. And your job is going in there so that when they come from there, the Lord will fitly join their joints together and they will come back with a different mindset. They're going in there for no joke. It's a mindset. They're going to change a mind, the mind. God is capable enough to work on the mind. Too much about job. What did they tell you? You get a clothes? What they, come on. It's not about the clothes. It's not about what they tell you. It's fixing you. When we go into the fasting room, you're going to fix, you're going to be, it's like you have a problem, it's like you're married. One of my children had said that word and I took it. It's like you get married and when you're going through the marriage, the marriage starts to have problems. So you know what? You're going to a therapist because you want someone to help you fix it together. God is the therapist, you're going to see him. You get into the fasting room, you're going to the therapist. And you have to remember when you go to the therapist, you have to tell the therapist the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help your God. So if you are pointing, mother, know your job. And don't take it up until you're sure you're ready. I teach a mother was given my first in schooling and instruction by, by the woman by the call of Mother Stella. You hear me? When I was beyond to ordain as a child in Captiville with teacher Jones Church, the woman came all the way from Canada to meet me and sit down out of my spiritual mother house and tell me, do you know what you are about to do? I thank God for sure to do. When I came from China to America, to New York, it was Mother Stella again. Nobody else. She came. She sat with me for the two days. She brings you whole house. Because of the time, you know, Another woman come the way all the way from Canada called Mother Audrey. 
family, God is mighty to save and strong to deliver. Learn to give people what is theirs. Learn to take responsibility for your action as a mother. Learn that we all make mistakes. There is no perfect mother. Learn that there is children that will never make you forget your mistakes. But don't worry about that. They, they will come. Learn that there is different type of children. It has some children. You, no matter how you love them, they never satisfy. So carnally, so spiritual. I remember going through things and I don't know how to deal with it. And I had to go to God. When I realized I could do that, I go to God. And the attitude and the behavior that I have going to them, the time when God finished speak to me, if I did go with that attitude, would I break down the house? But when did God speak to the heart of you as a mother? I just say, Father, you give me this work, you know, me never ask for it. I like to surrender to God. I never ask for it. But you, God, give me. So I expect you, God, to direct my part. So this evening, family, no. If you claim to be a mother and you're about to do this work, take your lessons. Take, get a book and start to write. Open your Bible and understand that I'm it have consequences. Brethren, we are about to bow in prayer. I'm losing time. Heavenly Father, mm, creator of mankind, Father, today, Lord, I come before you, Lord, as a woman, a mother of God, a mother carnally and spiritually, and I'm asking your God to touch every heart, every mind, every body, every one Lord that is on this line, the 15 of us here today, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you touch us. I pray, oh God, that you direct us. I pray, oh God, that you lead us. I pray, oh God, that you fill my mouth with word of wisdom that I will be able to pass it on. Jesus, use me as thou seem best. Whatever is your role for me, oh God, whatever is your role for any one of us that on this line, please, God, direct us, Lord. Grant us that strength and that courage. Grant us that understanding. Grant us the love, the unity, O oh God, that we may be able to do your work. Bless us, Lord. Look at America land and Trinidad land. Father, deliver us if thou be so pleased and help us, O oh God, to do your will because I am depending upon you. Because I am nothing without you, God. I am nothing. My life will have no meaning if I have no God with me. Help me to make right decisions. Help me to do the things that is right. Help me to speak truth regardless of the consequence. Father, if I know, Lord, you will take me through. I know that there will be no jail to hold me. I know, Lord, that you will treat me as how you treat Joseph. I know, Lord, you will make a way. And if you make it for me, Lord, you will make it for all those that heart is indicted in a good matter. Children of light. Remember what Roman said, Roman 12 said. Put on your armor bearer of light, your armor of light. Those of you that are here, put on your armor of light so that the light will shine and men may see the good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Remember, today is not about you. Let us take God seriously. Let us take the work of God seriously. Let us remember it's the body of Christ. Take off the old dirty clothes that you're wearing and put on new clothes. Throw off the dirty shoes and put on a new shoe. Take off your crown, clean it, shine it, and put it back on as a mother. And stand and hold fast to that which is good. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you, Jesus, is Lord. Father, Lord, I thank you about to bring Bishop Ashby in another name, but in Jesus' almighty name, Bishop Ashby.
exactly right. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Giving all fun and glory to the Almighty God once more for the spring of our lives that we can meet once more on this spot of a ground. God has, uh, I want to say he has predestined this hour that we should be gathered for this purpose and I want to glorify his name for all those who are here. Today we glorify him as we are about to uh, bring our lessons from Romans, the 10th chapter from the 4th verse. Romans 10, 4. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You begin the reading from Romans, the fourth, ch the tenth chapter, from the fourth verse. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to yeah. everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law that. That the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what? But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which is preached. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has risen him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesseth, confession is made unto salvation. We rest at the ten verse in other name, but in Jesus' almighty name. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, will without end. Amen. Once again, we glorify the almighty God, as I always say, this teaching is guidance, is instruction. Today we have Romans, the 10th chapter before us, uh, the fourth verse, uh, which, which is speaking of, of, of Christ, Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I believe here it is making a, a sort of comparison to Christ and Moses, the commandments and the laws of God, the promise in which God has promised unto us that he shall send a Savior to redeem us. Today we know too well that God is a good God and his mercies endure forever. For the first verse, fourth verse declared unto us, for Christ is the end of the law for, righteous, for righteousness to everyone that believe it. Now Christ did not, Christ came that he said, he said, I did not come to destroy the law, but that the law might what be fulfilled through him. Because mm -hmm. As the promise was given, because he said, you know, I, 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 he said, I came that, that, man might live and that man might have life more abundantly because uh, when those of old they called upon God due to the persecution and the turmoil that they were under they, in their belief they were looking for some mighty man with a, 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 a man of valor with a sword you know to redeem them from all you know those that oppressed them but Christ said no he said I did not come you know, to condemn, but I came that I would give you a, a sword that you would be able to what cut sin and Satan asunder, that we may be able to see and observe and uh, be aware of the things that are before us. He said here, he said, for Christ is the end of the law. It says, for what, the, the scripture declared unto us, it says, for what the law could not accomplish in the flesh, Christ came to do it through it, the Spirit. So although we had the Ten Commandments, Although we still have the Ten Commandments, my question to you today, is the world following in obedience? We have been given the law. We have been given the instructions whereby we ought to walk and ought to live, that we would not be condemned, that we would be able to walk in the righteousness. 
the Lord says, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's good, thou shalt not bear, bear, bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not, you know, uh, steal, murder, all these things. But yet, if we look in the world today, we are doing it and evermore. We are, although we have the law, we have not been obedient to the law unto righteousness. For the Bible says what? Uh, Christ is the end of the law. So, you know, I'm going to create a new, you know, a, as we often have to say, a new covenant, a new commandment, a new directive for, the, for you to walk therein. Because what? The old was not able to restrain us or sustain us by, in, in the flesh. So Christ came that the law might be fulfilled. You know what? The Bible says what? Christ is the end of the law for those what? who believe. It is the end of the law for those who believe because there are those who still believing that the law is able to save them. There are many uh, people that are justifying themselves according to the law, the Ten Commandments, and the Bible tells us that unless we obey all of them, such shall be our portion. It says our obedience to the law is no longer um, on, on the basis of our, of our relationship with God. The law has no uh, relationship with God anymore. We do the law because, you know, it, it is required of us. You know, we say, well, God said you're supposed to pray, so we pray. It said, kneel, we kneel. We, it says to come to church once a week, we come to church once a week. This is not the, the what, what God has intended. He didn't want us to follow uh, a ritual, but he wants us to be ritualistic in our worship to God, in our perseverance to God, in our direction to God. Christ is not come. Uh, Christ did not come to compromise the law, but that the law may be what enforced as it was given. He came to reiterate the law because as it was written, man was there to interpret it according to how they like and as they feel. Today, you know, I made mention of the Supreme Court yesterday. Now, the Supreme Court is a higher court, the above court, but there are lower courts. The Supreme Court interprets the law and that the lower court would be able what? To administer. The Supreme Court comes as Christ, as God. Administering the law to the lower court, but unless the lower court interpreted in the manner in which it was directed, you know, it is vanity of vanity and vexation of, of God's spirit. So Christ came what? To, he came not to destroy, but he came to enforce that which has already been given. He said, you know what? I didn't come to destroy the Ten Commandments, you know, but I came to give you a new commandment. Love ye one another as I have loved you. And if we love one another, we would see that those Ten Commandments encompass that love that we have for one another. Because if I love you, I would not steal. If I love you, I would not kill you. I would not, if I love you, I would not backbite. So he came that the law may be enforced. Now it says in the third verse, it says, Moses described the righteousness, which is the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Now, <laughs> it's saying live by the law like I just say we're just going to ritualistic the Bible says well do this so I'm uh, doing that it says do that so I'm doing this but the Bible but God wants us what to exceed what the law has been given unto us many times we want to what we try to do we try to what make the mark we just try to make the mark but I, I, I just make it over I look at it as sometimes when we look at education with children today. We know too well there is a there's a failing mark and there is a passing mark. There is a mark whereby you know you can just make to get over the failing. So many of us just try you know just to make it over. But God wants us to exceed. He wants us to be righteous. He tells us what he's going to make us a royal priesthood. Amen. This is what God wants of us. He doesn't want us to just to be soldiers in the army of God, but he wants us to advance in rank. And when we advance in rank, we'll be able to what? Teach those that are still beneath, who are still working their salvation. It tells us here, it is also said that those who, are, who live by the sword shall die by the sword. If you want to live by the law, Find life 
and find light to the law, you must what? Do the law. And doing it completely and perfect. We get times we say, well, you know, I, I'm just going to make it. I'm doing, <laughs> as I said, just enough. But just enough is not enough. Not good enough, man. The Bible, it says in the sixth verse, it says, but righteousness, which is a faith, speaketh to the wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from heaven. Many times we try to say it's too difficult. God wants too much. It is impossible. But I want to tell you today. Oh, the scripture tells us only those who have ears to hear will hear. Amen. I often make reference to Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul spoke, heard the voice of Christ speaking to him expressively. Amen. But those that stood around just heard a thunder. Amen, brother. Amen. They, could not in, they could not interpret because they were not connected on the same wavelength. Yes, sir. The, but Jesus told the disciples, I want you to go into the upper room and I will... The Spirit of God will meet you there. It yes, is not sir. a second story or a second level. It is a state of mind and a state of consciousness. Yeah. We have to get self, self out of self. Spirit connect the world within this carnal body. So we have to get self out of self. It tells us what? The supper table is laid. Come and dine. Amen. We believe. Where we believe and we will receive. Once you believe, you will receive. We all have eyes to see, ears to hear. But the scripture says, we have eyes yet we see not. We have ears yet we hear not. This, this is written to the wise. This portion is written to the wise. Making a declaration that it's, it is the fool who says within his heart there is no God. So it says here, the righteous which is of faith speaketh to the wise. So it's not that everyone this, this word is being speak to because the Bible taught me that the fool has said within his heart there is no God. So it is speaking to a certain few. But to those who hear and who see and receive, God has a promise. God has righteousness. God has a redemptive spirit awaiting for us. For without God, we can do nothing. The seventh verse, Oh, who shall ascend into the depth? Is this to bring Christ again from the dead? We shall all descend, the Bible tells us. We shall all descend to, to lay this mortal body down that we may again rise in the newness of life and have life what more abundantly. We have to strength. We have no strength, no power of our own. But with Christ in me, I can accomplish all things. It's Christ in us. We don't have to go to the low parts of the earth. The Bible tells us what? Come and dine. The summer table is laid. Stoop down. Drink and live. Yes, sir. The earth, the eighth verse. But, but what said it? The word is ninety, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. We can immediately receive righteousness by faith. Do you understand this? We can receive righteousness by faith, having faith in God and Him only. And by what? Trusting in the word of the gospel of God. The gospel, the good news. It is good news God is bringing to us. What? It says what? The word is nigh. Our God is ever present. 
He is not a far off. Our God is ever present. He is a God that we don't have to make an appointment. He's a God that we don't have to make a schedule for. But we can call up him, upon him any time where you are. At any moment, cry out unto the Lord that you can that you may live. It says what even in thy mouth your your words what have power to save or to condemn and also to restore. It is said, he who keeps his tongue keeps his life. So be careful what you say. Woe unto them that lead God's sheep astray. Sometimes we sing or we giving people advice where we should keep our mouth shut. We interpret and vision where we have no inkling about interpretation and misleading, misdirecting. Sad shall be your portion. Be careful, there is power in your tongue. You can save your life or you can also condemn it. The ninth verse, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has risen him from the dead, what thou shalt be saved. Many of us, we want to be saved. Many of us, we say, how, how, how to do it? Nicodemus came to Jesus, how can I enter into heaven? How can I be saved? He declared he must be born again. There is no way around it. He must be born again. By the water and the spirit. Water is life. The spirit will be able to direct us. As I mentioned yesterday, it's that same water and spirit that was in the very beginning before God even made man. So he wants to bring us back into the very beginning and form us once more spiritually. Not just carnal, we already have the carnal body, but he wants to give us that spiritual birth that we may what? Bring forth fruit and fruit of the righteousness. David, what did David say? I acknowledge my transgression, confession. How many of us confess? How many of us are truthful? Confession, be ye truthful for what he's a read of heart. And the search of mind, so you're not lying to him that he already knows. We have to go before him. Lord, I acknowledge my transgression. Lord, I am a thief. Lord, I am a liar. Lord, I am a backbiter. Lord, I am a murderer. Lord, cleanse me. Renew me. Restore me. Acknowledge your transgression. Many of us come to God and say, well, God, forgive me for all my sins. That is not acknowledgement. Don't fool yourself. Name them one by one. The songwriter is going to count your blessing one by one. Name your sins one by one. It is only then God will be able to chip away at the stone. He will be able to cleanse us. He will be able to penetrate the barrier that the devil has set before us. Believe in your heart and in your mind and you will be saved. Only then, as we confess, will we be redeemed. The 10th verse tells us, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You want to, you want to receive salvation? Confess with your mouth. Lord, I acknowledge my transgression. It is not that difficult if you don't want people to hear. The Bible says, get a closet. Find some place of seclusion and cry out. The Bible didn't say just call upon and talk to it. He said cry out unto the Lord. Lord, I need your help. I cannot do this on my own. Righteousness and salvation. Those are the key words in this last verse. Righteousness and salvation will complete us in our work and our work. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what shall be saved? It's not a question of might, it shall be saved. We cannot find righteousness or salvation in the flesh or, 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 or in carnality. But we must first we renew our minds. Renew our minds, our spirit, our understanding for God. Be a vessel of honor, and not a vessel of dishonor. We were, we were not born into righteousness. No man was born into righteousness. But it is acquired through faith. 
a royal family or a priestly family or godly family, this doesn't guarantee you righteousness. Amen. Oh, my, fa my father is a bishop, my mother is this, that, and the other. No! <laughs> Every child must be on his own bottom. Righteousness is acquired what through faith and Amen. faith in God. The Bible tells us there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. Man, you cut it, you cut it. For the same Lord, so it is the same Lord over all, and righteous to all uh, uh, that call upon him. God is not going to, not to shoot me because I am not a Jew, or I am this, or I am not that. All that call upon him, come all that labor, and I heavy loaded, and I will give you rest. Today, let us glorify the Almighty God. For the Bible tells us what out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So what we must confess with our mouth with our mouth and believe in our heart. Amen. If the, if the scripture says out of the abundance of the heart, the Amen. mouth speaketh, the question for you today What is coming out of your mouth today? What comes out of your mouth today when we speak every word? Is it out of righteousness? It is, is it up for upliftment? Is it words of encouragement? Are we constantly condemning? The, we oftentimes use the phrase, such as a man thinketh, so Save is he. Me. Amen. Your mind. That is the that is the, the battlefield. Your mind. Amen. Do not allow Satan to overpower. Amen. Do not allow Satan to take control. Remember, there is a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. Do not submit. Do not surrender to the flesh. Just because we can't absorb the things of the spirit and we are living in the flesh, we we. <laughs> We are in the flesh. Amen, brother. For a time, for a season, that we may make our election sure. But this flesh must fall. We must lay this body down, mortal body down, that we will renew that right spirit. Today, we glorify the Almighty God as we uh, uh, as we examine ourselves. Some of the key words, righteousness, salvation, confession, belief. What in your heart? Not with your mouth. Don't believe with your mouth. Believe with your heart. Sometimes we say, yes, I believe, I understand. But we really don't understand. Truly. In all you get to get understanding, this is what the Bible tells us. If you don't understand, say you don't understand. You shall end up in situations because of what we don't understand. And we say, yeah, yeah. How many of us? There's many people in church today when they hear the word and a question we ask. Or teacher mama would ask the question, do you understand? Do you have any questions? We have it within our heart, but we, we kind of shame, you know? Uh -uh. And, and they look bad if I ask that question. Away with that. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself a proof. Acknowledge Christ and shame the devil. Amen, brother. Amen. If you're weak, Amen. acknowledge you're weak. Amen. If I am weak, I am weak. Call for strength. The Bible tells us what the strong may bear the infirmity of the weak. But if yes, I am sir. always walking like a if I am always walking like a strong, strong, nobody's going to come to help. Speak Cry it. out. Amen. It is only when I acknowledge my transgression, help will come. If yes, we sir. cease the prayer, we it cease the fight. the fight. It's the word Many of us are not praying. What, what is prayer? A conversation with God. Amen. Concerning your, your situation. God Hallelujah. used to come every evening. Every it's evening. True. He never missed that evening coming to Adam. How are you doing? How is it doing? Is anything that you know I, is, is anything you know I could do for you? How can we help you? How can we, you know, ease your burden? Mm -hmm. This is what God wants from us. 
communication with us when we fail to communicate with we fail to communicate with each other and and, and, and which also results in our communication with God. Today confess your sins before God. Hallelujah. That we may walk in righteousness. Yes, that our heart would be inclined to the things and desires of God. That we would not rise up late, sit up late, turn the bread of sorrow. Today, this is the, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. In the name of the Jesus Almighty name. Amen. Uh, what, a, what a lesson. What a preaching. I have to say, Bishop, this is one of the good ones. They're all good, but this one is one of the good ones. Good, good ones. I want to give God some praise, family, at this present time and hour for his mercies and joy forever. It seemed to me that this motherhood thing is causing a lot of little thing. You know, because everybody have their own, you know, what this one say and that one say and the other one say. But, you know, serving God and doing what God says is one thing. But what we need to understand is this. Take what you want from this and what you don't want, leave. If it fit you, draw the string. If it didn't fit you, leave it alone. If you're already walking in righteousness and you're already doing what it is you have to do as a mother, continue. But this is a learning experience for those who don't know or those who don't understand or those who know but not following. Because one time I knew and I didn't follow all the rules. And I get licks for that. Children want to say what they want and do what they want to you because, not because of that, because of me. And because I allow those in the house to do what they want. Because I said I get tired. And I get tired and my children can tell you that I get tired so I leave it alone. And I get myself into trouble. So the young mothers who are about to take, remember, do not spare the rod and spoil the child. It's better they walk out than they stay inside of the house and destroy the whole house. Don't follow anybody that say you can't put them out. Hear what I tell you, I'm going one bad apple to spoil the whole bunch. Because when they start the Roma, you ever sit down in a, con in a congregation and somebody pass a gas, it stink on the whole place. And so it does happen. When the devil come in, whoever I come, remember that the devil in, 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 in Matthew or John, it says, Satan about to enter into the heart of Jesus' his carrier. He wasn't there all the time. And when he come, he come to steal, kill, and destroy. So don't feel that you're exempt. And you're that holy that you wouldn't find a way. You just need to, 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 to recognize the devil in all his glory. And as Jesus said to him, Satan, I recognize you. So when you let them know in the flesh that you recognize that they're not, they're, that God is not with them, they either stay or leave. And if they're going to stay, they're going to change their ways. As for them to sit down in the back. Too much pride we hold in in the church. Too much faith we hold in. And when you look around, we, the doors that God put to lead, we're not leading anymore because we are so wounded. We arm break, we hand break, we foot break. We can't stand up right, we can't sit down right because we're taking blows. God didn't put us there for that. When you come into the house of God and you baptize or you, or you take hands of fellowship, your job is there to follow, not to lead. Leading is not from the congregation. It is from the pulpit. And if mothers and leaders and elders are not capable of doing your job, then leave God's business alone. Because God is a frowning judge. He's not a pity-loving savior. Jesus is. Remember Jesus? That he went and said, Father, if I find ten doing good, what you will do? Or five, five, what you will do? He said, he goes, spare. But when you're going to God, it's a different ball game. 
So Romans, the 10th chapter from the fourth verse, Matthew 5, 17. You see, we have gotten so many bad, you know, we feed with so many, what I would call, sour grapes, compromising thing. We compromise this and we compromise that and we compromise the other. That we end up compromising the word of God and what it's mean and the real texture of what it means. So any zandoli or anything coming in and they're doing what they want in the house of God. And those of us who say that God for them is a liar. Because when God put you at the head, let me tell you, you're the start to scratch. You can't, you can't swallow it at all. The fifth verse. Le Leviticus, the 18th chapter, the fifth verse. Nehemiah, the ninth chapter, the 29th verse. Leviticus 18, 5. Nehemiah 9, 29. Bishop, the lesson touching me. Because we're making a mess of God. We are making a mess. And when, the, when these mothers and elders die, you're hearing, oh, they did this, and oh, they did that, and oh, they leave so many things unturned, so many things undone. They cover up so much of things. They do so much damage. That when you now come in to fix it now, you become now, you know what? A bad person because you're cleaning up the mess. It's like, um, is uh, 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 what, what, what this man saying? The, uh, 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 the president, um, Obama. I remember he, hearing Obama saying, he telling them, he said, let's we inherit this, let us fix it. Not like Trump. He tried to, he tried to wipe off him, Obama because of greed, because of envy, because of hypocrisy. That is what some of us carry in. And it's right out there in the president for us to see. Man, examine yourself. Make sure you don't have those qualities, those ingredients is not in you. Especially when you become a leader of God's people. The Lord of God said, by the tree you shall know the fruit. The sixth verse, Deuteronomy, the 30th, 12, 14. Do not run your mouth on something that you part of. If you know you're doing something, you cannot get up there and tell man not to do it. You're preaching it. Although my mother tell me, tell them the truth, whether, the, whether, whether, whether it condemn you. Stay away from things that you know that you are committing until you fix your business then. And when you fix your business and those two still in it, remember to be merciful. Give them the word according to them. But remember to have a heart of love. Because you know, when Jesus was going, he said, love you one another as I have loved you. And as Bishop said, if you love me, you won't keep the commandment. And if you love me, you won't hurt me. You won't run your mouth on me. You won't sit down with others and ill treat me. But you will put me in high esteem because you love me. And if you love me, you will help me climb the ladder. You wouldn't love me and mash up the ladder that are going up on and then say, I know that would have happened. Hello? Remember, God said that the name of Jesus, every knee shall but we waiting because your day is going to come. Jude, the eighth verse, the seventh verse, speak for itself. The eighth verse is Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. The ninth verse, March 10, 32, Luke 12, 8. Mark, Matthew, the 10th chapter, the 32nd verse. Luke, the 12th chapter, the 8th verse. That is for 9. You see, Israel, Israel did misinterpret the purpose of the law, you know. Israel didn't realize what the purpose, what the purpose of what, what the purpose of the law was. They didn't realize that they would have benefit only through Christ. They thought they could have do what they want with God's law. This is why the first one wasn't good, and he had to write the other one on the table that we had, so we have no excuse. We didn't realize that, you know, you know, so the first time when they get the law and they, they want to abide by the law because the law was too this and the law was too that. You know what you do now? 
it make it worse. He write it on the table of your heart. So you're unable now. When the time reach and he call you to strict account, you can't tell him you didn't know. You can't say, teacher, Martha didn't this and this one and that. You're responsible for it because you write it on the table of your heart. The 10th, Matthew 10, 34. And what I am, what I am realizing, brethren, when man get the word and the word hit them hard, they just start to stew like you're stewing peas. They can't come down at all. But so and so and so and so and so come through awaiting on you all. But God speak to me. I say yes. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. God and strength. Nobody saying God speak. Wait on the anointing. The Lord give you, but do you do? If God did give you anointing, you would not be able. You wouldn't be speaking to your spiritual parents in that manner. You have gift, but you don't have no anointing. So you and your gift could go to hell. Because without the anointing, the gift was nothing. The Bible said on, 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 on the bank of Jordan, bring forth prophet, priest, and king. But if you come there, you still have, although you're bringing you there, they have to have an anointing. How are you going to do the work without the anointing? You're following what you see your mother and father and they do. Of course, we're going to take something from them. But they have a special piece of something that what God is going to give you to put, to add to what you have so you're able to do the work without any barriers. I could say that and I'm saying these things because I know that there is a, there is a silent listener to every conversation and there's an unseen eye that sees all things. Man don't want me to speak the truth here. Man calling me and telling me I'm giving out too much. My time, I am closer to the ground than anything else. And what I am giving out is either you take it or you leave it. It's up to you. And the reason for this is that you would not be able to tell God I did not know. So my family in Christ, remember, if they're calling you a mother, check yourself. You cannot be a kind of a mother that nobody has respect for. You give you a mother in the modern room, worst of all. Worst of all, a mother in the modern room does have a switch. And remember, Mona Room, a doctor, it's a nurse. And everything that they have there to attend to you, if they're walking according to the will of God, if they're doing what God gives them, and if they really take the job seriously. When you become a mother, you care everything you want. Your child going through and going out, you want to make sure everything right. They're going to preach you. you want, when they come in to preach, come and preach. I used to go through some of that. Come to deliver so I could hear what you're going so I could correct. I know what I'm going to say already. You're big. You should go home. Those things, I'm not dealing with it anymore. If when my time come and God call me and whoever he put in the seat want to put up with that, let them do that. But I would not be doing that anymore. You're in the church as the mother. They call in themselves big mother. You can't say a word in the church. From the time you don't say it, the time they reach on, they grab their phone to tell them something. That is not a mother. If that have apron, you're supposed to take off that and tie it with two strings coming down in the back because they need to start from growing up. Discipline in the house of God. When Jesus was going around, he said, tell no one. But yet he ran and tell. When you are talking about God, man supposed to see light of God on you. When we cannot see the light, what you're carrying, every day we turn as a conflict. And a, no! With God is love. Sometimes we love so much, people taking it out of context. You can't love a sister, now you're friending with she. You can't love a brother, now you're friending with the brother. You can't this, you can't that. Come on, who you think doing that? We're doing it ourselves because of our behavior. 
everybody's judgmental. I'm talking about being a mother. You would be surprised how much how much phone calls and, and, and text teacher I'm ever get. Because everybody have their own concept. And those outside, they will take your children and try to invigle a, a devil in them because of envy. Don't worry about she, she wants you to do this. Don't worry about she wants it. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me in your right sense you don't know it, they don't love you? Why will somebody try to lead the children aright and the other one trying to lead them to the street? You're young, what appeared as dead? Young people that's dead. Look at how they're talking about putting on masks. Look at how much thing they're saying. The devil Trump. Telling them, no, do this, do that, the other. Now half of them in the hospital line, don't they see Trump? Trump tell them to drink um, uh, um, Clorox. Dotish people gone, just like in the faith. Lack of understanding, lack of respect, lack of love. So you're following the devil. Go drink it. You're partying, you're, you're carrying on, you're getting on. They don't respect your name. Your name is mother, you have a collar in your neck. They ain't respecting it. They're taking you and, they, and they're watching you. I teach a mother, saw it right in Massachusetts here. They have the collar in the neck and the next one encouraging them to go wrong. And when I talk about it, they only tell me, well, he should know that. Well, he should know his position. And he have a collar in his neck and, he's a, and, he, and he have a church. Come on. Know your office. We're not knowing our office, brethren. We are doing what we want. It is getting to me. And when we finish, we call in and, and for something. Get it. The Lord saying, all oh, you're getting, get understanding. How it could be right. How you could be a mother. You're going on the beach and you're all your big leg and belly outside and you're putting it on Facebook for the world to see. The Bible talk about adorning yourself. Sometimes when you walk in the road, you can tell of every crease, every tire you have around your waist, every wrapper you come on. If you ain't ready, you ain't ready. This is why we're being slander. This is why we are called all these names. You will hear, oh, not only we are alone. Hello, I only interested in those that God gives me authority to do. I, I am not interested in the whole world because I cannot control the whole world. He gave me, he gave to me, he gave everybody at a portion. Take your portion and deal with it so that when the time comes, you may not ask no unclean spirit, where is your God? And the word of God will not say, depart from me, I know you not. But the Lord will say, welcome, dog, good and faithful servant. He prepared a place for us. That is where I want to be. I want that when my time should come, the Lord God, the angels of heaven, the doors will be open and the Lord will tell me I have another assignment for you. Because I believe we are, an assignment, we are all on assignment and all is a test, you know. And some of us failing miserably. So try and pass your test. Try not to be only materialistic. Put the screws where it need to be good, need, needed to be. Tighten it where it needs to be tightened, regardless to what. I want to tell you, we will love each other after all. So my family in Christ, may God bless you. May God cause his face to shine upon us. And I thank in God this today. Bishop Ashby bring a, a, you know, he speak as a champion. I, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm thanking God for today. May God bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And to all those now, 13 of us here, heaven bless you. Try to do your best. 
Try to do your best. And remember what Megan said. If we look at things, the worst thing to do is to do nothing. So I'm bringing a little bit of everything. The worst thing to do when we see wrong is to do nothing. If you see it and it's not going right, it's your job to speak up. And if they want to carry on, fine. At least you deliver and you know you're free. Heaven bless you. We thank the Lord for this, our spiritual food, and most because of Jesus' blood. Let manna to our soul be given them. Breath of life sent down from heaven for Christ's sake. Amen. Love you all. Continue to walk holy. Remember, that is the aim. Holiness. Have a blessed day, my family. In Christ, God bless you all. Same to you.